This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, aloha and welcome to Stand Energy Man. On this very first day of February 2019, man, I... I just don't know where the time goes. Where did January go already? It's almost coming up on Valentine's Day, and I haven't got a clue what to get my wife yet, so I need some help there. Anyway, thanks for joining us today here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Stan Osterman from the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, and I'm here on my lunch hour to interview some of uh, the folks that we kind of tap into an awful lot um, in the state of California to make sure that we're up to speed on what's going on and I know on the show, a lot of times I'll, I'll do a solo show and I'll highlight um, some of the newsletters we get from the industry partners. And one of those, in fact, I think one of the best newsletters we get is from an organization called the California Fuel Cell Partnership. So today's guest is uh, Keith Malone from the California Fuel Cells Partnership. And we have him uh, zooming in from California, from down in LA. And uh, Keith, welcome to the show. I'm really glad you could make it on today. Hey, Stan. Glad to be here. So, Keith, tell us a little bit about, you know, your background and how you got started working for the Fuel Cell Partnership and, and maybe what you do for the Fuel Cell Partnership. Well, I've been with the partnership now for almost seven years. Um, my background is mostly in politics and in the nonprofit sector. And uh, for the partnership, I deal with public affairs. I do a lot of um, outreach to legislators, policymakers, uh, planning organizations and the general public. I also talk to a lot of the news media, as you can imagine. And um, so I'm paid to talk and write a lot uh, about fuel cell electric vehicles and hydrogen. And, and just, you know, kind of really quickly, if you could bring up that first slide, um, the California Fuel Cell Partnership is a public-private partnership. So government agencies at all levels from our air quality management districts all the way up to the U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, our members also include many of the major automakers as well as um, hydrogen producers, fuel cell manufacturers, and others. And we work together to commercialize this technology or to really to push it along the commercialization pathway farther than it's, than it's gone. All right. Hey, you know, we, we heard over just over the last, I want to say, four or five weeks that Air Liquide and... Uh, air products, I believe, are putting liquid hydrogen plants into California. And, and uh, according to their press releases, it was to support the vehicle sector and your new stations. Um, and then I heard that in Texas, there's another 30-ton-a-day um, liquid hydrogen plant going in in Texas, again, to support um, hydrogen transportation sector that they see coming down the road. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what you know about the California projects? Well, I can tell you, at least from the air products announcement, it seems like it's going to be here in California. As for the Air Liquide, I don't think they've identified publicly a location yet. It's somewhere okay. in the West. Okay. Um, but, but that said, if you look at both of their announcements, Air Liquide certainly, the main objective was really to support fuel cell electric vehicles and to work with a new partner, uh, First Element Fuel, which operates a number of hydrogen stations throughout California. Um, Air Products, um, I think they, they gave a number of reasons why they were building that plant, but certainly, you know, being able to kind of feed, so to speak, or fuel, um, fuel cell electric vehicles um, was certainly uh, a key part of that announcement. And, and I just want to be clear that it's not just about, they're looking at not only the passenger vehicle market, but also they're looking at the heavy duty market as well, because we're just in the early stages of fuel cell electric trucks and, and they see large volumes associated with that vehicle category. So are you talking like Nikola Motors and, and maybe the drayage trucks that are working the ports over there? Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's what's on their minds. I think if you look at Nikola right now, I think they see most of their source of hydrogen coming from Nell Hydrogen, um, the company out of Norway, which is building their stations, um, and also it looks like producing much of their fuel. But um, if you kind of look at what's going on out of the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles, um, the potential for extremely large volumes of hydrogen, uh, they, they, they see opportunity there. Great. 
Yeah, I was really excited to see the, the two um, uh, Air Liquide and, and um, Air Products both announced because that was unprecedented. And I, I happened to be in Detroit for an, an Army uh, military forum that was focused on hydrogen. And I got a chance to talk to um, someone from Air Liquide and I asked questions about liquid hydrogen. And it turns out that most of the customers for liquid hydrogen um, right now, as far as he was concerned, were um, NASA and space programs. And that the average plant was only 20 tons a day. And to see two 30 ton a day plants get put on the, on the books to be built um, in the next couple of years, that seemed to be really exciting to me. I mean, that's, that says there's, there's a market getting ready to take off. And I think it's really exciting for California. I wish I could get them to do one over here in Hawaii because uh, we'd love to take all our renewable energy and help stabilize our grid and have some energy to export to boot maybe and send some over to California or send some to Asia. But I, I'm, I'm excited about hearing the um, liquid uh, hydrogen piece. But your stations in California, are, are a lot of them basically started off with liquid hydrogen um, and then you know, put into tanks on site as compressed hydrogen or, or you know, what's the, what's the use of liquid hydrogen in, in the stations you have going up on average? I know there's all different kinds of stations you have. Some produce on site, but a lot of them have it trucked in in, in uh, tube trailers. Can you kind of describe what the stations like are like? I, I'd say at the moment, most of the stations, given um, kind of their capacity, and where we are right now, um, and the vast majority, first off, are getting delivered hydrogen. It tends to be gaseous hydrogen. Um, there are a few stations that are making it on site, uh, but I would say as you look to the next generation of stations, the ones that are um, still being built, the ones that are going to be funded in the next round of funding, which is coming up hopefully in the next couple of months, um, you will, I think you will begin to see liquid hydrogen deliveries. But for the most part, right now, it's mostly gaseous hydrogen deliveries. Okay. Well, I think we have an image coming up here that, that shows where the stations are. Maybe you could talk to that. Well, the first one coming up is the electric vehicles, and it shows the um, Honda, uh, Toyota Mirai, the Honda Clarity, and the Hyundai um, there on the, on the side. And it, the, um, the thing says hydrogen station map and the California fuel cell revolution. I think the next yeah. one coming up shows the, uh, the stations. Yeah, there it is. So, right. talk, so the, so the talk first shot that. was the first shot was really of our website, and uh, that's the landing page. Oh. And um, right off the front of the, the the website, you can actually go directly to our a Google map of where open stations are located throughout California and where stations in development are located. So the green so right or the open? You, go ahead. The green or the open stations? The green are the open stations, and I believe yellow are the stations that are in development. All right. So there's a whole lot around San Francisco and L.A. and, and a couple popping up uh, in route in between. It looks like uh, maybe even one on the California-Nevada border on the way to Reno or Tahoe. So, so what you have right there, right now you have 39 stations that are open, about, I think, 25 more that are in development. And the, the general kind of layout of where these stations are going are you're going to con we're concentrating most of those stations where you have the highest concentrations of early adopters so it makes sense that you're going to see stations in the bay area as well as los angeles and orange county and then you have other stations like you said that kind of what seemed like an outlier it's one near lake tahoe okay. it's in Truckee, and it's meant to serve as a destination station so if you're really talking to, to folks in this community you're talking about kind of neighborhood stations as well as connector stations and destination stations okay are you working with the state of nevada at all about maybe starting to have them incorporate some hydrogen i know a lot of folks uh, spend the weekends uh, out of L.A. going to Vegas and out of San Francisco and Sacramento going to Tahoe and Reno. Um, is, is Nevada showing any interest into getting into the hydrogen network? So you're beginning to see a lot of conversations among all the states that border California, Oregon, Nevada, um, uh, not so much Arizona at this time, but I'm sure that will happen. Um, and certainly not directly next to California, but certainly Utah as well. But in Nevada, I think um, at the very least, stakeholders in California want to see stations open up in Reno as well as Las Vegas. 
Um, before that Las Vegas station can be built, we have to kind of time it with the location of another connector station on the California side uh, of the border. So, so we are beginning to have preliminary conversations. Our, our 2030 vision document, the California fuel cell revolution that just came out in August, I think has definitely caught the attention of policymakers um, across the U.S. Well, and it's triggered a number of conversations that we haven't had before. Great. I think just looking at that map of the existing stations and uh, stations ready to come online uh, is pretty darn impressive because, you know, uh, people I, I still think don't have an appreciation for how far along the, um, the forklift, the commercial vehicle and the passenger vehicle market is already growing in California. It's certainly not massive at this point, but it's a lot farther along than most people, I think, imagine. And uh, I'd really like to see a lot more of that out there. So thanks for sending out your newsletter and stuff. I try and, and spread it far and wide when I get it and uh, share it with, with folks. But um, yeah, California has always been leading the way. In fact, I think I put in the, on the lead into the show here that um, California never really stopped the hydrogen economy movement from back in the 2000, mid 2000s, um, 2005, 2007, eight, um, Hawaii and almost every other state kind of stopped and I think a lot of it was because the Department of Energy at that time didn't really look at hydrogen as a, a priority um, but recently you know we've picked it back up so have the, the Northeast corridor states um, and uh, California never stopped they just <clears throat> kept on rolling and kept on building that hydrogen highway and uh, and pressing forward so we thank you for all your work over there and all the standardization work and all the things that you've done internationally with all the companies to encourage the, uh, the continuation. So, you know, we, we kind of riding on your coattails, so keep up that good work. Well, I think, you know, California, certainly it's a little humbling when we have folks visit the state uh, from across the globe and they talk about what they view as California's leadership. Um, certainly there are a lot of stakeholders here that want to share kind of what we've learned, kind of the challenges and the successes. And it's clear that as other states begin to adopt um, and pursue hydrogen infrastructure and bringing in uh, fuel cell electric vehicles, they're all going to do it their own way. I think some people are uh, think that somehow the California model is going to directly kind of apply to them. And, and we've talked to states and, and said, you know, you've got to kind of look at a variety of factors to figure out what's going to work best, what's going to help you launch this market um, faster mm. and easier. Well, I know, do you still have Tyson working in the governor's office over there? Tyson Eckerly, yes. Yeah. And can you kind of comment on how important his position is in, in the effort to really get hydrogen moving in the state of California? Because one of the things we run into in Hawaii, besides a total lack of funding, is um, you know, having somebody that can kind of break loose issues with fire marshals or permitting, permitting, you know, things, because every, every different municipality and, and county has different rules and different, and it's like a learning curve that starts at zero for all of them. So what's Tyson's role and, and how does he impact what you do? So about, I'd say about five years ago, um, uh, the governor's office, through the governor's office of business and economic development, they created a position uh, almost like an ombudsman to work on hydrogen fueling infrastructure. And Tyson was the person they appointed. And it, um, his position kind of coming out of the governor's office has really helped to coordinate among state agencies to um, in some ways talk to stakeholders in a way and get their attention in a way that, that others might not. And so um, he has served and his, colleagues because they've brought on at least two or three additional staff members to kind of help with this sort of kind of coordination across the state. And um, it's been critical. And in fact, Tyson did so well that he was um, promoted to overseeing uh, zero emission infrastructure across California. And so um, there is now, he has a deputy, Gia Brazil Basin, who oversees hydrogen fueling infrastructure. Wow. So yeah. we, yeah. we've kind of been jealous of uh, not having a position like Tyson here because in every time we try and push something forward, there's always a lot more questions and they, they seem to be the same questions, but 
you know, when you, like you mentioned, when you get a call from the governor's office and it's like, hey, I'm Tyson and I'm here to help, it seems to get a lot more attention than, uh, than trying to just deal with it at the worker bee level. It's always nice to know that the governor's watching it and seems to push things along a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely. And Tyson is part of a larger ecosystem that, that was created. I mean, the, the Fuel Cell Partnership began in 1999. This is our 20th year. And, and the addition of Tyson and others has really helped to build relationships to educate, you know, um, uh, policymakers, um, whether they be on the bureaucratic side, the agency side, or the legislative side. It's, um, it's really helped to kind of coordinate activities and, and, and build agreement within the state. So, so Tyson is really the latest incarnation of this sort of evolving, like I said, ecosystem of advocacy, supporting, and cooperation, and collaboration. Well, we're going to try and figure out how we can grow a Tyson over here in Hawaii. Hey, Keith, we're going to take a quick break here so that some of the other programs can talk about what they do, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of... Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch, uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan Osterman here for Think Tech Hawaii and Stan Energy Man. We've got Keith Malone from beautiful LA talking to us today. He's from the California Fuel Cell Partnerships. And you know, they do a lot of um, public uh, awareness and a lot of coordination in the state of California on their hydrogen um, economy, their hydrogen uh, networks and infrastructure. So Keith, we, we were talking a little bit about um, the fueling stations and, and how they're popping up. Uh, we have another image coming up here. Why don't I bring that up and, and you can talk to that one. This is the California fuel cell revolution. So um, the, when I first came on board in 2012, we issued a roadmap, a strategy document for how do we launch the passenger vehicle market? Kind of what, what kind of infrastructure and network do we need? And this is our 2030 vision. And, and this kind of takes us beyond that original vision and looks at down the road, more than 10 years forward, kind of what does California look like, not just for passenger vehicles, but for buses and trucks, and as well as kind of the energy ecosystem and the role that hydrogen can play. And so we, this, um, the original roadmap took us about five to six years to kind of kind of produce the, the ultimate document that we, we, we shared with everyone. But this document took us about a year and a half to two years. And it kind of looks at things from a 60,000 foot level. And although we don't have a lot of numbers, probably the, the key item that comes out of this is the fact that we call for 1,000 strategically located stations, hydrogen stations by 2030, that will serve upwards of 1 million fuel cell electric vehicles. Okay, I think that's the next image we got coming up is uh, that that depiction or that graphic. So if you so if you look at this next document, we show two maps of California, and so on the I believe on the right it shows eight thousand uh, gasoline stations. Right now we have about eight thousand gas stations in California, and we wanted to look at with a thousand stations, can we approximate that network and that coverage that comes with it? And as you can see, we get pretty darn close. And I think we figured out that we would reach about, I think about 
more than 90% of California's population with just 1,000 stations. You know, a lot of people might say, you know, 1,000 stations compared to 8,000 stations isn't a lot, but it's important to remember that with our 8,000 stations right now in California, only about 1,800 of those stations are doing the heavy lifting. Those 1,800 stations are providing about 50% of the fuel. Okay. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's a pretty real, realistic goal. I mean, from my perspective, here on Oahu, we're, DOE worked with us on a strategic plan as well, and they wanted to, us to put like six or eight stations on Oahu initially, and we actually walked it back to three, and, and we could actually start with one. Um, we've got one in Mapunapuna now. We could have one more uh, along our main highway between the airport and Waikiki, and we'd be good. But, you know, it's, it's funny to compare and contrast California and Hawaii because our population is like 1.5 million for the whole state, close to a million on this island. And when I think about that, it's like L.A. is, how many million are in L.A. right now population-wise? Like 8 million or something or 10? Something about that. Yeah, it's, something it's, like that. It's, it's like 8 or 10 times bigger than what we are here in Hawaii. And I'm seeing the challenges that we face, and I just go, holy mackerel. There's just so much to do. But um, it, it's impressive to see how many stations are coming up already. Um, your graphics uh, kind of tell the story. So the, the other thing we talked about earlier was um, the trucks. Some of the trucks, like Nikola Motors, has, has got their, their big plan to lease uh, the 18-wheeler you know, transport trucks with hydrogen, and they're building their own network, their own fueling network across the nation. Um, now that's really exciting, but I know there's a lot of... Um, what we call drayage trucks um, around the ports there in LA, and there's a lot going on with hydrogen at the ports in LA. Um, and those are the kind of trucks we would actually use in Hawaii. So could you describe, you know, what a drayage truck does and how the hydrogen seems to fit well into that, um, that niche market? So generally speaking, um, um, drayage trucks are really those trucks that take goods from the ports up to kind of the centralized locations where they'll get shipped out of kind of the LA basin, the Southern California area. So they usually might have require ranges of about 100 to 200 miles. And so what you've got right now, um, we're, like I said, we're just in the early stages. So you have a number of trucks that have been funded by the federal and state government, by California and the federal government. And they'll be coming on the road in the next couple of years, but already we have two Toyota fuel cell trucks, which is kind of a remarkable, a really interesting uh, a, approach to the way um, we kind of scale up. Because Toyota basically took two Kenworth trucks and basically scaled up their Mirai technology, which is absolutely fascinating. And as you begin to look at what's going on globally, it's not just Toyota that's doing this, it's Hyundai. Hyundai recently made that announcement where they're going to be doing a thousand truck project in Switzerland. Um, but, but kind of circling back to California, um, but we're, we're just in those early stages. Uh, the state just recently funded Toyota, Kenworth Trucks, Shell, and the Port of Los Angeles for a 10 truck project. Mm -hmm. And that project also includes two heavy-duty stations um, in the greater L.A. area. So it's going to get very interesting very soon. Yeah, the, that drayage truck is, I mean, we don't have any distances from the port of Honolulu that um, are more than probably 30 or 40 miles from the port. So that's the kind of truck that we could actually use a lot of because we, we offload the container ships and then they go right out to the Costco's and the, and the Home Depot's and, and go straight to the user. Uh, right off the container ship, so we could we could use that. Um, are you, you're familiar with U.S. Hybrid there in Torrance, aren't you? Yes. Okay. I'm really. Uh, we work a lot with U.S. Hybrid. They actually have a, an office out here, and they do a lot of work with us on our hydrogen vehicles. What's it going to take to get U.S. Hybrid, you know, up there on, with the big guys? Because they actually do exceptional work, uh, real high quality work. But I, I'm kind of frustrated that uh, we can't get some of the the smaller businesses to play with the big guys like Toyota and Kenworth. You know, what can we do to help uh, U.S. Hybrid kind of push it along? You know, there, there's right now in California, there is a grant funding opportunity out that supports in-state manufacturing 
for zero emission um, technology. So, so that's kind of one opportunity. Uh, you, you know, this market, there's a lot of partnerships that are being made uh, and continuing to be made. So I wouldn't count them out at this point. I really wouldn't. Yeah, I know they've been um, doing a lot of, uh, not a lot of, they've, had, they've, they've actually built a, a couple trucks and they've also done a lot in the, in the uh, mass transit market. So I know several of the municipalities uh, in California are already running hydrogen buses. Um, how are those things working out and, and what's the plan for expanding that mode of transportation in California? So California has about, I'd say about 18 years of experience with fuel cell electric buses. Right now we've got about, oh, my numbers are, are, are not good in my head, but about probably 25 buses on the road and another 20 something in development. And so, um, and then we've got kind of on top of that, we've got about 13 to 14 years of federally collected data that shows that these buses perform well. Um, these bus agencies include AC Transit out of the Oakland area, the East Bay of, of San Francisco. Um, you've also got Sunline Transit out in the Coachella Valley, out in the Palm Springs area. Uh, and, and they were actually, they're kind of really um, a, a, a trailblazer because they were the first transit agency in the U.S. to go all natural gas uh, back in, all CNG back in 1994. And then you've got a new agency, um, our newest agency is Orange County Transportation Authority. And they are um, awaiting now uh, 10 buses coming out of New Flyer, which is one of the largest bus manufacturers in North America. All right. I tell you what, Keith, we've got about um, 45 seconds left. And I'm going to leave it to you. I was going to try and talk a little bit about grid stuff because here in Hawaii, we're trying to match up uh, energy storage on the grid with. Uh, hydrogen for transportation. So I'll leave the last 30 seconds up to you to just talk about whatever you'd like to in California. We'll wrap it up. I, I think that um, we see a lot of opportunity with renewables and excess capacity on the grid and opportunities for making hydrogen not only for fuel but for industry as well as for energy storage. And I think you're going to see in the next couple of years some really interesting projects launch. And I think a lot of minds change as well on this topic. Well, Keith, I want to thank you for uh, your time today. And I know uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a lot to ask to, to get you to spring away from the legislature and all your other duties. But thanks for being here with us on Think Tech Hawaii and Stan Energy Man. And I'm sure I'll have you back again sometime soon, maybe after you have one of your other fuel cell conferences. And we'll get some of the latest updates from there. But thanks for being on today. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for having me, Stan. Okay, Keith, take care. And for everyone out there, uh, thanks for joining us today on Stan Energy Man, and we'll be back with you next Friday, um, the second Friday in February already. Oh, my goodness, how fast it's going. Aloha.